Welcome back, everybody. Let's get after it. But we're told by the same token that Australia was, was populated by convicts. They sent convict ships out here. But these convicts, they were just amazing stonemasons, and they, they came out here and they built a quarry, of course. It would have been the first thing they did. And then they built a brick factory with the bricks they got from the quarry so they could make bricks so they could build all this incredible European-style architecture, as you do when you're colonising a country, killing all the Aboriginal people. You know, nothing makes sense. None of our history makes sense at all when you look at the the timeline we're given and the stories that we're given, all you've got to do is step back and think about it and you realise that none of this is true and this culture, all of this stuff was here and we inherited it all. Whatever happened, something happened, we're calling a mud flood. So much culture is buried below ground in Seattle, in San Francisco, across Europe, here in Australia. There's at least 18 to 20 feet of stuff below ground. A lot of the buildings that you see actually have lower levels and they've got windows and doors and rooms and all sorts of stuff underground that we don't know is there. And they just simply put in a new doorway, paved a new road and didn't tell anybody it happened. They repopulated the world with children and they taught them whatever history they wanted. That's what happened about 200 years ago. And uh, this is all starting to come out now. And I think that's another reason why they're really pushing to try to cull the population now before this information comes out. Because so many people are waking up to the fact that we're living in a complete and utter lie. So yeah, it's an important time, brother. And I, I don't think any of the stuff that they're doing now, they actually intended to do now. So they've had to bring it forward and move it forward because they're, they're running scared. And they look terrified too, these politicians. When you see them being interviewed on TV, they know that the people know they're lying. And they're getting out there and they're trying to still play their parts. But the, look at the body language of them. They look terrified, they look scared to death that people are actually waking up. And the faster they push this, the more they're waking people up. So it's, it's all backfiring for them, I think, bro. I'm not completely sold on the whole mud flood theory yet. There's definitely a lot of evidence that points to it. So I'm not saying that it's not possible. But we are certainly living in a day and age where everyone's waking up from the lies that have been told to them for their entire life. Yeah, the politicians are certainly starting to lose their grip on the population, thankfully. Maybe Kanye wasn't lying when he said it. Maybe he was telling the truth. My mama was sacrificed. You understand? Yeah. Michael Jordan. What about him? His dad, right? Bill Cosby, his son, Dr. Dre, his son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. Have you heard the whole situation with Gilly and his son? It's crazy because in this video, you can feel the agony radiating off of this man. Mind you, he's signing a $100 million contract and just look at how unhappy he is. Look at what he does when the song says sacrifice. Turns away. And then this man's like shaking it off. And look at him. Gonna be rich forever. Just wait for him to sign it. Wiping his tears. I don't know who those people are. <laughs> I'm not a rap guy. Based on what I've seen from rappers and how they present themselves, how they carry themselves, I feel like he's trying to show off his uh, overwhelming emotion of, look at all this trouble I went through, all all the dues I paid, and all the headache and heartache, and blah, 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 and look, I finally made it. I think that's the overwhelming emotion that he's showing in that video, is trying to convey that He's overwhelmed by the fact that he made it and he's signing this big contract. But I will say this, there's definitely some truth to what Kanye's saying, and I'll leave it at that. We have video games that exist. One is called No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky was created by like 14 college kids on one DVD. It has 80 quadrillion planets. The game never ends. And unlimited numbers of life forms as they travel throughout this game. Life forms evolve and come into existence. There's a universe on one D B D. What happens if you put AI on that software? Then those beings become conscious and those animals become conscious. Another game that exists, The Sims. The Sims are people that have jobs, go to work, have babies, go to parties, hang out and all this kind of stuff. That's the video game. They're talking about putting AI into The Sims. They're going to become conscious. Now what happens in The Sims and this other game, No Man's Sky, when these people become conscious from the AI and then write their own programs inside the program and create another conscious universe? The universe could be many, many 
layers deep. And that's just a hypothesis. What I'm saying is we may not be in base reality, being that we could have been created by an ancestor of another universe. This is something that's always fascinating me, that the thought of one day we're going to create a fake universe that's going to have the capability to create its own fake universe. Uh, so it'll be a fake reality within a fake reality within a fake reality. Are we in a fake reality? Are we experiencing right now The Sims? Are we just The Sims 10 with AI? How would we even know? And we have more clouds falling out of the sky. This video was directly sent to me from Tanzania. Check this out, y'all. Hey, live wapa. Ini Morogoro, Tanzania. Uh, meganika mawingu yatua. What is going on? Why are these things falling out of the sky? And lately, have you guys noticed there's been this huge blanket of clouds over the sky? I showed you guys how there's blue skies under these clouds. You know what I'm saying? Blue skies with different kind of clouds, and these clouds look different from the other ones. But check it. It looks like foam, but then again, it's not. Look at that. It looks just like clouds, y'all. Look at that shit. Yeah, it looks just like clouds. And then the, the way that it just literally floats over the next ones. This is crazy, y'all. What y'all think about this? This is so interesting. All over the world, clouds are falling down, y'all. And then again, you notice the news isn't saying anything about this. The meteorologists ain't saying nothing about this. You don't think they see these videos? You don't think they see these things going viral? They know what's going on. They're just not going to speak on it. Now, I remember a lot of these movies, these people would just literally play their character, play their role. Like, they act like everything is okay. Meanwhile, everything is in chaos, is in turmoil, which is what's going on in the world right now, you guys. I'm not exactly sure what this guy thinks is uh, nefarious about low-lying clouds. <laughs> I mean, it's just really dense fog, buddy. You see it all all the time around where I live. Uh, I live in uh, western Kentucky out by the land between the lakes, and when it's really, really cold out, we get some serious fog around here. Stuff so thick you can't see through it, and it's all coming up off that lake. I've seen this before. This doesn't. This is nothing nefarious. <laughs> hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. My name is Daryl Anka. And for the past 40 years, I have been channeling an extraterrestrial entity that we call Bashar. Bashar is a first contact specialist from his civilization, which is called Esasani, which is in a parallel reality. If we were to overlap their reality with ours, his planet would be about 500 light years in the direction of the Orion constellation. He's brought through a lot of information to us over the last 40 years, and we're going to explore and share some of that information today in this series. My experience with him began in 1973 when I had two broad daylight UFO sightings here over Los Angeles, which started investigating the idea of what that was all about and led me to the understanding that Bashar and I have made an agreement to do this channeling before this life. So we would like to present that information to you in this series. I did a channeling with my head wired to a brainwave machine, EEG machine. And there were many unusual things that happened in my brain during that channeling state. One of the most profound things is that there are certain centers of the brain that are responsible supposedly for processing the personality. During the channeling state, my personality center is shut off. So if I'm not there, who's speaking? So here we have a picture of what disconnects when Daryl begins to channel. And you can see the areas in blue, the functional Broadman areas, we call them, um, that are not used when he is channeling. And it appears that he disconnects from his personal sense of self. He disconnects from the experience of pain. Now what increases when he begins to channel is, first of all, his processing speed. And processing speed is a very interesting phenomenon because what happens is it develops early in childhood. And by about the age of five or six, and certainly nine or 10 maximum, we reach a set point. And this set point doesn't usually change during the lifetime. And in Daryl's case, it actually went up when he began to channel. And it increased when he listened. The actual frequency of the processing speed was tuned to an exact frequency all over the brain.
Now we're looking at Daryl's anterior cingulate while he's channeling. And you can see the red areas there. There is actually gamma frequencies that I found in his anterior cingulate. And gamma frequencies relate to the higher mind. And gamma frequencies are often found in Tibetan monks and people who meditate a lot. To summarize sort of what I found here in, in Daryl's brain in comparison with the channeling state, he starts from a very stable resting state. And then he experiences changes that statistically less than 1% of the population would experience in the same way. He increases his processing speed. He tunes it exquisitely to one frequency all over the brain. And then he's able to create a resonant holding environment for the peak performance or the channeling to happen. Uh, he pumps energy into the right frontal cortex and the right auditory cortex so that he can empathize and, and hear very, very clearly. And because of the gamma frequencies in the anterior cingulate, he can shift gears. He'll be able to, to shift gears and navigate cognition, thoughts, and emotions very, very flexibly. And he'll be able to interpret from a higher perspective, from a more evolved place in his mind, much like from the highest mountaintop. This stuff all sounds wishy-washy hoo-ha to me, but it's because I've never been able to sit down and successfully do a, a proper meditation, I guess you could say. I've made several attempts to try to do the whole astral projection thing and all that stuff, even at a 45 minute sitting in the floor with my legs crossed, no noise, just focusing on breathing, uh, I, I couldn't accomplish it. Um, just may not be one of the people that are capable. Having that I've put in a serious effort in the past to try to do some of this stuff with zero results makes it really all sound, makes it all sound kooky to me. Uh, I do still think there's something to it, but until I can experience it a little bit for myself, it's going to continue to sound crazy to me. In fact, if anyone can point me in the direction of a good source for learning how to do astral projections uh, or just meditating in general and getting better at it, if you could drop a, a comment down in this comment section for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. They estimate that one human body can store 13.5 billion years of data. Everything that exists, everything that's happened since the beginning of time is stored inside of your individual body and minds as well. We're a walking universal library. We are the way for the universe to figure out and explore the third dimension and understand what it's like to be and live in the third dimension as every individual living thing. And we're all connected through this quantum entanglement. Every single thing that exists is all connected. Space is an illusion, distance is an illusion, illusion separation is all an illusion what do you mean it's an illusion we appear to be sitting in two separate chairs with a space in between us but we're all atoms on an energetic grid that's connected and has always been connected so the space in between us appears to be a distance but if you go on the quantum level you discover that we're both local this entire universe is made up of a complete holography we're living in a fractal holographic matrix a matrix of light and it doesn't take away from there being a creator because what i'm telling you about is the method used to make this creation this goes back to me to the Dolores Cannon stuff because what she kind of preaches is that you have a lot of lives that you're going to live throughout your existence that you're going to die go up to a location I guess you could call it a type of a type of uh, waiting room and then you're going to re-enter into a new a new existence a new life uh, sometimes on other planets but sometimes on earth and you're going to experience what that life is offers you in order to gain some greater understanding and reach a certain level of consciousness. But it's interesting to hear uh, Billy Carson talking about that because I have a little bit more faith in what he talks about than I do the Dolores Cannon stuff because a lot of hers is, is through hypnotism. And as I just discussed, you know, a lot of that stuff is really difficult for me to grasp. So I'll just put it that way. NASA is not the only space program. American Army has its own space program. And the American Navy also has its own space program. But what the Army is doing, or, or the Navy, let's say, in space, it's not public domain. They have spaceships right now in space. And they admit it. But we don't know, we don't know what the names of those spaceships are. We don't know who's on those spaceships. We don't know where those spaceships are going. There was what was called Project Horizon in the United States. And Project Horizon was a proposal by the United States Army in 1960 to put an army base on the moon 
So it's quite possible. But when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon in 1969, the American army may have been there already three years before. All right, I don't believe this. I don't believe that the U.S. Army was at the moon before we landed there because I don't believe that we landed there. I'm not convinced yet that we can even travel to the moon because of the Van Allen radiation belt. So because of that, I'm going to call this theory garbage. 1920 is when everything pretty much changed. They started changing every single thing. They started removing certain parts of the history. They started rewriting the history. 1920s is about that time. Educational system started changing everything. Rockefeller educational system started changing everything. So if you find books, you want to find books before 1920s. Because if you don't find books before 1920s, you're usually being told a bunch of nonsense. And you look at a lot of the free energy books too, and everything related to the ether, that's before 1920s. The ether was removed from the periodic table after 1908. And every book you look into, it talks about ether and terrestrial magnetism and all of these things. 1908, that was removed off the periodic table. And that was removed so that people would not believe in the ether. They would think it's woo-woo. They would think it's pseudoscience. Those are all terms of the Rockefeller educational system. Coming up with terms to debunk the truth and debunk what we were once connected to. Then when you get rid of ether, you get rid of everything related to the fifth element and the quantum. You get rid of all of that. And then you make up a whole new narrative and you remove all that so that when you can't explain something, you just say, I don't know what it is. And this video or this clip probably is a good explainer as to why I don't believe in the powers of these what seems like mystical practices. You know, astral projection and meditation and hypnotism, deep hypnotism. You know, I was probably probably taught to think that that stuff is all hogwash. And I do believe there's something to it. I just don't have a lot of faith in it because, because I don't have a lot of experience in it. What's the deal with the Freemasons? There's only a few real Freemasons that exist. In other words, when I say a few, I'm talking about maybe a few hundred, maybe at the, you know, at the top level that really, really know the ancient secrets. This goes all the way back to deep, deep antiquity. We're talking about 30,000 plus years ago, there were these brick masons in ancient Kemet called the Shatu. After the Great Flood, Amun-Ra, aka Marduk, he's known as Marduk in the Bible, M-A-R-D-U-K, Kemet, he was known as Amun-Ra, but he had had these brick masons helping him rebuild the land of Kem. And these brick masons had the secret knowledge of space flight, technologies, how to turn stone structures into advanced computer housing, data storage devices, as well as power generators and many other functions. A lot of the stone structures that were built were actually multifunctional stone computers. If you're going to a place where, where you only have limited resources that you can't take a factory and a whole bunch of workers with you, what do you do? You learn how to work with what's there. And they mastered stone masonry, but they also encoded and embedded a lot of the wisdom and knowledge from the ancient Egyptian mysteries and the Kemetic mysteries into the structures. Now these Freemasons were called Shatu. As a matter of fact, the Shatu helped Amun-Ra escape. In the last, there was a pyramid war. There were two pyramid wars. The second pyramid war in the tablets talks about the fact that the Shatu helped Amun-Ra escape through a hidden path in one of the pyramids and before he left he decreed he would leave the kingdom to his Ra Kam. Ra Kam, K-A-M, translates now into shield. Kam translates into shield, Ra shield. Over time it became Rothschilds and so this decree came down tens of thousands of years ago. Who's the richest family on the planet worth 700 trillion dollars combined net worth? The Rothschilds. That's a very interesting history that I was unaware of. Would that not mean that they are the chosen ones? That they were handed this uh, ancient knowledge and, and given this uh, task of passing it down and maintaining the secret. Maybe that's the case and they just decided to, like most humans, take advantage of the fact that they had this powerful information and no one else had it. What we don't talk about a lot is the UFOs that are living under the sea. Bermuda Esso. Unidentified submerged object. Oh. And they said it's around the Bermuda Triangle. Christopher Columbus, he said a light was under the water. Like, there's no lights in 1470 whatever. Why did we change it to UAP instead of UFO? Unidentified flying object now. Unidentified anomaly anomalous phenomena, here's why. Because they are what's called all domain, space, air, and sea. Unidentified anomalous phenomena covers all domains. So you see no inertial effect, which is no slowdown. 
from space to air to sea. And a good example of that would be the Tic Tac UFO event with Commander David Fravor. Have they tracked them moving at high speed underwater? Yes, 100%. So the resistance to the water isn't an issue. Correct. And Bob Lazar explains this in his uh, craft propulsion system explanation on Joe Rogan's podcast. I believe that this thing is watching us. What civilization was 6,000 years ago? Sumerian. The Sumerians. The Sumerians. Homo Homo sapiens shows up all of a sudden out of nowhere. Right. uh, And then within a short period of time, you know, obtains and learns all this knowledge. According to the book of Enoch, which is one of the apocryphal books left out of the Bible, but he's important because he's mentioned in the Bible. Enoch. uh, Enoch. The book of Enoch. Uh, These beings came from heaven to earth. And then they even named, they have names. They taught them how, taught human beings how to, technology, how to make weapons, how to, how to even uh, create, make beer and all this other crazy stuff. Uh, And then they took Enoch on a trip to the Earth's atmosphere and beyond. And he saw the Earth and the shape of the planet as a sphere and how he saw that he was living on a giant ball and then brought him back. Yeah, this is all in the book of Enoch. The only Bible that has the Book of Enoch in it is the Ethiopian Bible. It's the only Bible in the world that actually incorporated the Book of Enoch into their canonized text. The rest of the Bibles uh, omitted the Book of Enoch. Uh, Now we can go back a little further. As of recent, because of Gobekli Tepe and Derinkuyu in in Turkey, we know now Mm. 13,000 years. These are the Atlantean wars that everybody's trying to figure out what happened. It's in the Book of Deuteronomy in the Bible. All the wars are right there. (laughs) <laughs> but you say a lot of this was omitted from the Bible. A threat. They talked about us being coming a threat in the Sumerian tablets. In the myth of Adapa, they talked about it. They talked about it in the Atrahasis epic. They talked about it in the epic of Gilgamesh. All these tablets, they talk about us potentially rising up and even superseding mm. them. This is an ancient tablets. And mm. it all comes together like, wow, what is going on here? So I think it's watching us. And I believe that it's using quantum entanglement to transmit everything in real time, what's going on on Earth, back to home base at Voetis. And that this could be the grabby civilization that we're, we're talking about. When he says it's watching us and transferring everything back, I believe he's talking about the Black Knight satellite. That's what he thinks that thing is there for. That's what its purpose is. I wish that I had all of the information that Billy Carson has in his head. I wish that I could retain the information that I read. I'm reading his book right now, and I've got another copy of the Complete Apocrypha coming to me. Just another warning, do not order this particular book off of Amazon. It's just some dude's summary of all the books. I ought to just throw this thing away. But I got a new version coming that's supposed to be the actual text, so I will let you guys know if I come across anything fascinating in that. I think of like the orphan trains. You know, back in the day with the 1900s, with the orphan trains, they were doing a lot of what looked like cloning with children. And if you look back at the 1901 incubators, Coney Island, I remember this now. Yep. They they had the stuff on where they had the incubators and they were showing all these children and they said they were all premature, which was interesting. Every single child was premature, but they had just thousands and thousands of these children. So, you know, you sit there and wonder, well, where were all these babies being born from? Where were they coming from? And then you kind of sit there and think back, well, 1901, they could have been cloning. And then now they're saying, you know, we can maybe finally do it. But this technology has been around for a very long time. I never even thought about that. And I did, we had covered, it was one of those uh, nights that I did a, a did you, strange did you know section. And we were talking about all the incubator babies from Coney Island. Um, They were pretty much on display. Like they they were in, they were put in, uh, you know, street level windows. Uh, it was almost like going to a puppy mill. It was it was incredible. And never once did cloning ever call, uh, cross my mind until right now. All right. This just reeks of conspiracy theory that's gone off the deep end to me. There's no way that we were doing human clones in 1901. Do we have the technology to do that now? I believe so. And do, have we had that technology for a couple of decades? Very likely. But I don't believe we had it in 1901, over a hundred years ago, before we had color television. Where are the, where are the kids? What happened to all the kids? September, there was 49 kids reg- uh, that weren't registered to go back to school. By October, a month later, I don't know how it happened, but the news reports started coming out that there was 500 kids that haven't reported back to school. Now, on our end here, Everyone says, oh, if, you, if you're reading the reports, it's saying more than 100 dead. 
for some reason, they don't want to get that 100 count up higher than what it really is. In Lahaina, here on the west side, you, we can guarantee you that's going to be 500 to 700 dead. Now, 500 kids haven't showed up. Where are they? They haven't contacted their parents. They haven't done it. Nobody knows where these kids are, and nobody knows where their parents are. You had multi-generational families that perished in their home, and that's it. There goes the record. Who's going to say, oh, my God, my son is missing? I could throw up. I mean, it's, it's, the counts are way off. No one's giving you an accurate count. You're not even allowed to question it still. Pelletier, Chief Pelletier, MPD, um, news agencies and news reporters want to talk to them and everything. First off, if you're not a Hawaii news media, they're not going to even talk to you. They're not even going to respond to your email. They'll give you, like, the public, just ignore, like, oh, you can get your information from here. But if you're Hawaii news media and you're trying to talk, talk to uh, Chief Pelletier about anything in Maui, he'll literally tell you right off the bat, we are not talking about the Lahaina virus. Let's move on. For, for some reason, no one wants to talk about it. They're all avoiding it. They're all ignoring it. You're not allowed to report on it. You're not allowed to ask questions about it. And they're definitely not going to talk about it. The counts are forever going to be like this. We're never going to have an accurate account because they're never going to give us one. They're never going to answer any questions because they don't have any answers. Not any that are going to satisfy your curiosity about what happened. They've got answers. They know what happened, but they're not going to tell us because it'd make us too mad. And it might make us get up and fight, metaphorically speaking. YouTube. Have you seen the line in Saudi Arabia? Do you know what yes. that is? Yes. Science fiction turned reality. Saudi Arabia is going off. That's insane. That's so Star Wars. They're building that, that shit. That is so insane looking. I had lunch with this guy, Saudi guy. I'm like, what do you do? He's like, well, I'm in charge of all the insurance for the line. We think we know what money is. This is where the money is. Look how look, high it that's is. How, look at it's it. It's higher than the Empire State Building. They're it's building 200 it miles now. wide. We, it's happening. Oh my God. It's mirror hard. glass facade. This is a black mirror Bro, this, this literally is science fiction. So what this is, is some mega city that's many miles long. No roads, cars, or emissions that will run on 100% renewable energy and 95% of the land will be preserved for nature. People's health and well-being will be prioritized over transportation and infrastructure, unlike traditional cities. It might be dope to get a fucking spot there to visit. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like like palm tree islands and everyone thought it was crazy. Look at what it looks like inside. It has, that's it's insane. Happening. Autonomous services. Look, you got drones that are fucking delivering you food. <laughs> Bro, that might be sick. If you haven't looked recently to see the progress being made on the line, it is insane. I cannot believe they're actually building this thing. I just thought it was going to be another one of those uh, concept cities that never came to fruition, but they're making it. And that radio command link. Actually, it's a link along that tether line you see there, 25 feet of umbilical cord. That contains the life support uh, system and communications link from the spacecraft life support system out and through that chest pack. <sighs> and here I stand with egg on my face. Uh, I've been telling y'all for weeks now that that NASA faked all that video footage in space, and <sighs> there it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. We've clearly been to space. There's obvious video proof right there. I mean, you can clearly see the earth behind that, that craft and everything. And uh, he definitely wasn't hanging on wires. <laughs> Guys, that's the end of this video. Of course, I'm joking. <laughs> that was the fakest crap. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the end of this video. I'm going to go ahead and call it here. I hope you enjoyed the clips that I put together for you guys today. I hope you'll come back and see me again tomorrow for the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching yesterday's video so much. We're sitting at around 75,000 views. That's pretty awesome. Well, I hope you guys have a great, safe, fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you back here for the next one. See you tomorrow.